Hello Colonet Africa online students. Welcome to our sixth lesson in this topic of salt. In this lesson we are going to look at the preparation of salt by direct combination of elements. We shall also look at the preparation of insoluble salt by uh, precipitation method. Salts can also be prepared by reacting metal with a non-metal. This method is suitable for preparing both soluble and insoluble salts. Let's look at an experiment whereby we are going to see how you can prepare iron 2 sulfide in the laboratory. And this is our experiment 4.8. The procedure, put a spatula full of iron firings in a crucible. To the same crucible, add a spatula full of sulfur. Mix them well. Heat the mixture strongly. When the reaction is complete, allow the product to cool. Let's look at the discussion. When a mixture loves sulfur and iron is strongly heated, it grows red even when the source of heat is removed. This indicates that this reaction is exothermic, which means it gives off heat to the surrounding. This shows the reaction between iron and sulfur produces heat to this heat so it is an exothermic reaction the color of iron is gray and that of sulfur is yellow while the end product that we obtain the iron to sulfide is normally black in color the black solid formed is iron to sulfide this is the chemical reaction we have iron which is solid then we have sulfur remember sulfur is solid it's a yellow solid. Then when you heat the metal and this molecule of sulfur, you obtain iron 2 sulfide and this is in solid form. Then the method is used to prepare iron 2 sulfide is or is called direct synthesis because you find that it's like you're combining the element directly. The iron element and the sulfur element are combined directly to form iron sulfide, and that's why you're saying this is a direct synthesis. Other salts that can be prepared by a similar method are sodium chloride and iron 3 chloride, and these are the equation. You have sodium metal, if you heat it in the presence or in a stream of chlorine gas, you obtain sodium chloride solid, which is a white uh, solid. Then iron 3 chloride, to obtain iron 3 chloride solids, you heat iron in the presence or in a stream of a chlorine gas and you obtain the iron 3 chloride salt. Let's look at the preparation of insoluble salt. In this case, we have the experiment 4.9 and you're going to look how we prepare read 2 sulfate through um, precipitation method. Put about 10 centimeters cubed of red 2 nitrate in a beaker. Remember, red 2 sulfate is an insoluble salt. So, red 2 nitrate is a soluble salt. So, you're putting a soluble salt of nitrate. Then, to the same beaker, you're adding an excess magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is a soluble salt. So, you're going to find that we are going to have an ion exchange between Read and magnesium. Start the solution using a grass rod. Let the solid settle, then decant the liquid. Wash the solid with distilled water. Filter and dry the solid be in between filter papers. Let's look at the discussion of this experiment 4.9. When lead to nitrate and magnesium sulfate solutions are mixed, a white solid is formed. Or a white precipitate is formed. The ions present in the reactants are read to ions and nitrate ions from lead nitrate. Then we have magnesium ions and sulfate ions from magnesium sulfate solution. When the two soluble salt solutions react, read sulfate, which is an insoluble salt, and magnesium nitrate, which is a soluble salt, are formed. Generally, in this process, 
two soluble salts react to give an insoluble salt and a soluble salt as the product. In this case, we have the red sulfate. Remember, the sulfate of red is insoluble, as we found in the solubility. Then magnesium nitrate is a soluble salt, or nitrates are soluble. The insoluble salt is normally given as a precipitate, which is normally a solid. The soluble salt is left as a solution. Thus, in this reaction, the metal ions of the salts simply exchange their ions. Remember, the reed had the nitrate ion, magnesium had the sulfate ion, and at the end product, the lead has the sulfate ion and the magnesium has the nitrate ion. So they are exchanging their anions. Reed sulfate is formed as a white solid or a white precipitate. This method of preparing salt is called precipitation or double decomposition. In this method, we start with solution of substances. Therefore, both must be soluble in water. In other words, the starting salts should be soluble in water. When we mix the two solutions, they exchange the ions as shown in the following general equation. Let's look at this general equation. We have A, B, this is one of the salts, a soluble salt. Then C, D is another soluble salt to get A, D, which is an insoluble salt, plus C, B, which is a soluble salt. So you get an insoluble salt and a soluble salt. This equation is called stoichiometric equation, where A and C, A and C, these are cations. They are cations, while B and D are anions. B and D are anions. And you can see A is taking the anion of C to get AD, and C is taking the anion of A to get CB. So we have an exchange of ions there all the anions there. Cations A takes the anion D combined to C while cation C takes the anion B combined to A. That way the cations exchange their anions. Let's look at this equation which is involved in that uh, experiment in the preparation of red to sulfate. We have red nitrate plus magnesium sulfate to form red sulfate plus magnesium nitrate. So AB plus CD to get AD plus CB. That's how we have in that. If you read the two equations, you can see how the ions uh, or the anions are being exchanged between the two soluble salts. Then looking into the two equations, A is cation red ions, B is the anion nitrate ions, C is the cation magnesium ions and D is the anion sulfate ion. Then we have the equation and the, the soluble salt ions exist freely in solution. For instance, magnesium sulfate in solution exists as magnesium ions which are mobile or free or they move freely in the solution and the sulfate ions which move freely in the solution, which moves freely in the solution medium. So, equation above can be written in the form of the ions as follows. So, you can write that equation in form of the ions because you're saying when you have a soluble salt, the anions and the cations are free to move. Similarly, when you have magnesium sulfate, it's a soluble. So, the magnesium ions are free to move, the sulfate ions are free to move. So, you can write them separately. And the lead sulfate, which is solid in form, we have a very strong ionic bond between red and sulfate, which means that these two ions cannot move freely, and that's why they are combined in solid form. But magnesium nitrate is the ions are free to move. Both the cation and the anions are free to move. Looking at the reactant and the product side, you can see we have magnesium ions and nitrate ions on both sides. These ions and these ions, these ions and these ions. So, these magnesium ions and nitrate ions are, aqueous, are in aqueous state at the beginning and at the end of this reaction, they remain unchanged throughout the reaction. The ions that remain unchanged during the chemical reaction are called spectator ions and are omitted when writing the ionic equations. 
Therefore, in the ionic equation, that the magnesium ions and the nitrate ions, which are the spectator ions, are omitted when writing the ionic equation. Generally, spectator ions or ions that are unchanged on both sides are cancelled out in order to get an ionic equation. Let's look at how you cancel them out. So we have that equation. Then you see this is a spectator ion. This is also an another spectator ions. This is a spectator ions. This is a spectator ions. They appear in both sides. They have they all they appear unchanged. So you can cancel them out because that one and that one can cancel each other. Then the other one can cancel each other. The magnesium ions on this side can cancel the magnesium ions on the other uh, on the product side. So you're going to find that this gives us the ionic equation. In the ionic equation, we don't have the spectator ions. Look at it like the way you look at mathematic equation. If you take the like terms together, i.e magnesium ions and silver, uh, nitrate ions sorry on the left hand side of the allo they become negative and hence uh, plus magnesium ions minus magnesium ions will give us a zero so if you look at it in that manner mathematically take this to the other side treat this as equal sign if you take this to the other side it's going to be negative if you take this to the other side it's still going to be negative that means you're going to have two nitrate minus two nitrate plus magnesium minus magnesium ions plus sulfate ions so this will give us a zero this will give us a zero and that's how we add up with this uh ionic equation the ions in the solution that react to form red sulfate are red ions and sulfate ions these ions are in aqueous state at the beginning of the reaction and end up in the solid state at the end of the reaction the ions undergo a change in physical in their physical state as shown by the ionic equation above because we have the in solution but they end up being in solid in other words, from aqueous to solid, they undergo a uh, physical state change. The equation obtained by writing only those ions that undergo change during a chemical reaction is called ionic equation. Reaction in which solids are formed from aqueous solution are called precipitation reactions or double decomposition. The solid forms are referred to as precipitate and Precipitation reactions are suitable for preparing insoluble salts. And that brings us to the end of our sixth lesson. So, you have questions to tackle. The assignment six in the preparation of insoluble salts. Uh, and also, also tackling the dialect uh, synthesis. So, make sure that you, that you do all the questions. Use the word document to check for the answers and mark for your self the assignment let's meet next time for our seventh lesson in this topic goodbye